Flying Commando! Top high above a large city stands the headquarters of a man devoted to the cause of freedom and justice. A war hero who has never stopped fighting against his country's enemies. A private citizen who is dedicating his life to the struggle against evil men everywhere. Kent Jackson. Detector dial zero. Expose a radioactive element. Activating dial detector. Point one. Point two. Four. Eight. Ten. Maximum flash at point ten. Better cut it back or blow the filament. Cover it up, Vicky. Well, that works even better than we hoped. Okay, it works. So does a pogo stick. Where do we go with it? First to the government, then to a couple of million amateur scientists. This is a centilometer, a pocket Geiger counter. Now, with one of those in his pack, every hiker and fisherman can be a uranium prospector. Secret Squadron Headquarters, SQ-1 speaking. Hello, Jet Jackson. This is SQ-822, Gladys Murphy, in Landsberg, Maryland. I've had an awful scare. Really? What happened, SQ-822? We can't have people running around scaring Secret Squadron members. It wasn't people. It was a giant. A giant? He was right in my backyard. Though I'm sure he doesn't belong there. Hello, Jet Jackson. This is Gladys's mother. Uh, we've been trying to tell her that she's been imagining things. I hope you can persuade her that there's nothing to this giant foolishness. No, SQ-1. There is. I saw him. Tell you what, Gladys. Icky and I are flying down to Washington on squadron business. Landsberg is just over the Maryland border, isn't it? Yes. It's just a few minutes. Could you possibly come out to 163 Brook Street? We'll try to steal the time. Because if there is a giant around there, I want to see him, too. Goodbye, Gladys. Bye. Are you kidding? Haven't we got enough to do in Washington? People can be just as frightened about things that aren't real as they can about things that are. Fact is, if we'd check most things that scare us, we'd find they aren't real at all. Now, if we can prove that to one squadron member, we've done a good day's work. Oh, yeah, sure. There couldn't be anything real about a giant. Of course not. Fire up the silver dart. Right. Yeah, but if there is, we could sure use one around here sometime. We'll sign him up for the squadron. Icky. Yeah, I know. Fire up the silver dart. for you. I knew you'd come. Well, I'm sorry we're a little late. That's okay. The old giant doesn't usually appear till after dark. After dark, huh? Gladys, did you ever stop to think that most of the scary things we see after dark aren't really there at all? He is there. It was probably just a big shadow. Sure. You just show me that old giant. He'll cut him down to size. <laughs> Say, don't you smell something good out here like candy or something? Why, yes. That must be the fudge I made for the Sunday school sale. It's cool on the side porch. Would you like some? Well, if you got some extra, we, uh, we were so busy in Washington that we kind of missed supper. Of course. Bring the pan in, why don't you? I'll introduce Jet Jackson to father and mother. a giant. Let's see where he went.
he goes. Good evening, gentlemen. Something we can do for you? Yes, a patient from here has been on the prowl in the neighborhood. Frightening children. Big man, about seven feet tall. Oh, there must be some mistake. We have no patient of that description. But we saw him. He just came through the gate. He disappeared inside. Oh, no. It's quite impossible. Now, if you'll excuse me. Well, gentlemen. perhaps you will excuse us, sir. Are you in charge here? No, Dr. Rausch is our director. I'd like to talk to him. Is he in? Our director is not on call. Never in the evening, gentlemen. Pardon me. And we traced the big prowler here, Dr. Rausch. But your associates seem to want to dodge responsibility. Guess you don't believe in giants. The trouble with him, Doc, is he never got roughed up by one. Gentlemen, Dr. Bowers is only trying to protect a trusted member of our sanitarium staff. Bring him in, Doctor. Rucha. But, Doctor, bring him in. The individual you're about to meet, sir, is quite human, despite his enormous size and his childlike brain. Because of his extraordinary strength, he is also useful with violent patients. I'll bet he is. <laughs> What's this I hear about your forgetting your manners with these gentlemen? And you were outside the sanitarium grounds against my orders. Why? What were you after? Sweets, I'll wager. Candy. Wasn't that blue chip? Chocolate candy? Uh, candy. He'd gorge himself on candy if we'd allow it. But we don't. Not one single piece. What's wrong about a piece of candy once in a while? It is wrong for Blucher because I forbid it. He's gross enough as he is. Blucher, give me your gate key. Give me your key. As a punishment for this disgraceful conduct, you shan't go outside the wall for a whole month. Now, get back to the kitchen and finish your chores. Now, gentlemen, if you'll accept our apology, I can assure you that Blucher has learned his lesson. Now, I'll see you to the gate. And will you please tell the little girl that if she'll come over any day, she can meet the giant and find out he's just like a big puppy. Okay, Doctor. Thanks. Good night. Good night, gentlemen. How do you like that? A rest home for giants. I thought I'd seen everything. Not everything, Icky. I have a hunch there's something cooking around here besides chocolate fudge. Hey, look. Those giant jokers are probably mining uranium. Well, that fly certainly indicates radioactive substance around here and in major quantities. I'm really getting a flash in here. Here, give that back. Why, of course, I, I only wanted to look at it. This scientific instrument, a scintillometer, perhaps. Perhaps. I apologize for my impulsiveness. Uh, uh, science and scientific instruments are my work. Oh, indeed. May I ask who you are, sir? Uh, I, I don't know. I try so hard sometimes uh, to remember. Uh, they, they call me Professor. Oh, then uh, you're a patient here at the sanitarium. Oh, oh yes, Dr. Rouse helps me wonderfully, especially when I, I'm at my work. Well, do you still continue your scientific work, sir? Oh, yes, indeed. That's the prescribed uh, formula. It's curing me. Uh, I know it is, but it's uh, 
it, it's, it's a long process. And it gets lonely sometimes when I'm the only patient. The only patient? You mean there are no other patients here at the sanitarium? Professor! Professor, what are you doing outside your room? Just taking a little stroll uh, and talking to these gentlemen. Talking? About what? I, uh, I, I don't remember. Uh, uh, what was it, sir? We were talking about Blucher there, and how he takes care of all the patients, and uh, how you forbid him to have chocolate candy. Yes, of course, Blucher. <laughs> but it's your bedtime, Professor. Take him to his room, please, Blucher. And now, gentlemen, I hope you won't mind going about your business and let my staff and my patients get some rest. Not at all, Doctor. Good night, Doc. Who are those men? I don't know, but I think I've seen that tall one's face or his picture before. I don't like it, Bowers. This is the first time that strangers have penetrated our privacy. Well, fortunately, we'll be through with the whole operation by tomorrow night, if the professor's calculations are correct. We have exactly 24 hours to run final checks. Come to the bomb room. Seven eighteen, ninety two, twelve forty one, and forty two. Well, that does it. What are you doing? No, I'm checking the fingerprints on that solitary patient at the sanitarium last night. I can't get him out of my mind. I've, I've got to know who he is. Well, how are you going to do that? He didn't give you his fingerprints. Oh, yes, he did. When he handed this Geiger counter back to me, thumb, first two fingers on the chrome surface. I had Tut make a blow up of them. From those numbers, Washington can tell us in five minutes who he is if they have his prints. Well, if he's a scientist, they'll have his prints. I'll query the FBI. Is your answer from Washington? Just came over the teletype. Subject fingerprints, those of Professor Edward H. Jenner, noted nuclear physicist. Say, we have a file on him. Mm -hmm. Sure, here it is. Pulled it out of the file and we got the teletype. I know most of what's in it. He worked on the H-bomb project until about three years ago. Then he collapsed on the job from strain and overwork. Professor Jenner was last reported in Landsberg, Maryland, committed by his only living relative to a private sanitarium. And our little private eye showed enough radioactive material on the premises to blanket Washington. Get the silver dark cooking, Iggy. Okay, but you fellas get something else cooking. We're gonna bump in a big boy down there again. I wanna get this bazooka loaded with chocolate fudge. <laughs> We can't get by him. Let's go. Magnetron reactors. The gamma gauge shows maximum intensity at factor five. Jack. Cut. Yeah. That installation they're working on, it's an atomic pile. It could be explosive. Explosive? Let's get out of here. Hold still, Icky. Unless I miss my guess, Professor Jenner built it for them. In his demented state, they've turned him into a scientific slave. Now the detonator. But, my dear doctor, this is not a dummy installation. It is live. One slip of the detonator, 
and there would be a terrifying eruption. Not only ourselves, but the world around us would be blown to lifeless shreds. Professor? Activating detonator tubes. Incandescence approaching Max. Test completed. Excellent, Professor. Just in time, seems that we have visitors. Blucher was so stupid as to let the intruders in, he will have the privilege of rescuing them from the gas tunnel. Powers, switch the tunnel blowers on to drive the gas out. Go get them out of the tunnel. Put them down. Just as I suspected, our inquisitive guest of last evening. See if he has a gun. Give me his identification papers before he comes to. This man is Jet Jackson. What? And these must be his celebrated assistants. Put them down. Tie them up quickly. Tell me one thing. What have you done to the professor's mind? Compose yourself, Jet Jackson. Your friends are to be left to die in the bomb explosion, but you are going with us. Your favorite form of travel, by air. Where are you taking me? First to Mexico, and then overseas. You have so many valuable secrets in your head, you'll be invaluable to our high command. I'll not tell your high command a thing. Oh, yes, you will. Everything you know, just as the professor has done. You see, he had a mental breakdown just as you will have after a few months of our treatment. Set the detonator, Boz. Detonator set, trigger time, one hour. Timing device will trip the trigger in one hour exactly. By that time, you and Dr. Bowers and I will be airborne many miles away. Dr. Ross, my dear friend, I, I don't understand. This is gravely dangerous. You don't have to understand. Tie him up, Lucha. Oh, I don't understand. What have I done? You must help me. Lucha, take this man upstairs. Lucha, because you have been a faithful servant, I give you back your gate key. Oh, good. Jesus. While we are gone, I want you to guard the sanitarium. Do you understand? Yeah. No one must enter the grounds. Above all, no one must go into the cellar. Guard it with your life. Now, open the gate. If I open the gate.
it for us, my friend. You were just in time. Boy, that was a close one. Yeah. Hello? SQ-822? This is SQ-1. Why, hello, Jet Jackson. I wanted to tell you that I've just been in touch with Washington. The plane with those phony doctors was intercepted at the Mexican border. Both men were taken prisoner, and they're safely in jail for life. Well, that's good. And Professor Jenner was in the government hospital where he'll get completely well in a few months. That's even better. What about the giant? Oh, well, Blucher, he's in a prison hospital for mental patients. And finally, Gladys, I'm proud to tell you that your contribution will qualify you for the Secret Squadron Medal of Merit. Oh, thank you, Jet Jack. But I really didn't contribute very much. Oh, yes, you did. The key that unlocked the whole crime was your chocolate candy. You brought the giant right out into the open where we could spot him. Good goodness, he really wasn't a giant. I realize that now. No, of course he wasn't. He was just an unfortunate human being whose only fun in life was a piece of candy now and then. And if those phony doctors had been decent men, they would have given him some. So you see, what tripped them up in the end was their own petty, greedy meanness. It always does. Our next mission takes us to the bottom of the sea in search of a fortune in jewels hidden on a sunken mystery ship. Others are after this fortune, too, so there's bound to be trouble, especially at the bottom of the sea. So be sure to be with us when we take off after the sunken sapphires. This is Jet Jackson signing off with the code of the Secret Squadron. Justice through strength and courage. Out. Oh!